It's June Pride Month. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I want to jump on and do a little um, talk on the uh, June Pride Month. Definitely a lot of going on about that and conversation and topics. So kind of wanted to share some what I receive on it, you know, and June is actually a great month for it because lately a lot of things um, just for myself is coming up, you know, about love, you know, when we're seeing things in the world that isn't really to love and we want it to express his love. Um, and so seeing that and sharing that and allowing my soul to bring that energy of vibration of love up and out and through, because we need that at this time. We're going through a lot of shifts, you know, that aren't related to love and it's to shake it out and to help transform everything as we're continuing to move along the timeline. Um, and so with sharing the energy of love helps us to move along that. And so uh, last few days, um, it's been, you know, uh, had a strong emotion of love just emerging from somewhere out of my soul within myself to express it. And so I was sharing that out into the world for no reason. It's just, it just raised up throughout me. Um, and so uh, claiming, you know, that sort you know, source or spirit or soul wants more love in the world at this time. And we really need it. And June is a really great time, basically, because a lot of things are blossoming and changing and fulfilling um, because you have like where you plant your seeds and you go through the seasons. June is like the blossoming and the showing up of different things. And right now is a great time for uh, Pride Month because you love, right? What is love? It's not judgment. It's non-limiting. Um, it's not. Um, it's not sinful. It's not judgmental. Right. And this is the energy and vibration. And it's a great time to have this coming out, you know, as far as Pride Month or anything else, as a matter of fact, um, is a great time is June, you know, because it's the energy and vibration of love that's surfacing. And we kind of need that right now. And in addition to me having the emotions rise, you know, periodically of love just surfacing um, to share that, you know, into the world, because we need that energy and vibration right now to help lift up consciousness. Um, I've been guided to give people <laughs> money on, on, on the street um, to, you know, just asking a stranger because my tire was going low. And this was a kind of cool little story. My tire has been going low. And I'm like, why is this going low? And it just happened to be one cap was off my tire. So I was like, okay, let me go to Walmart and get a cap and get, you know, a pump. And then I pull up and park my car and I'm walking the store and this guy, this person, with a guy in a family next to me um, happens to have a flat tire. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going in here to get a pump. I can come out and give it, you know, help them, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's just right on time. Everything is just right on time. And the person that I gave money to, you know, they were just sitting there. And, you know, I don't denote why they need the money or why they want the money. That's not for me to decide. If the source is guiding me, and it's not like I'm rich or anything, but sorry, <laughs> hair. Um, if I'm being guided to give money, I'm just going to give it because I can and because I'm being guided to. Even if I don't afford it, if I can't afford it, you know, I'm still sharing. I'm still putting the love out there because we need it on all different levels for all people, right? And it's not um, subjective um, as far as love goes. Love isn't subjective. What I like, what I don't like, what I want or what I want or what I deem right or wrong or bad, you know, that's not love. That's judgment. Um, and then that goes on to say, um, you know, more of what I wanted to get into on the topic. Um, cause for me, um, uh, it kind of was like, wow, that's at this time and day and age that we're still doing things like this. And I'm trying not to be judgmental about it, but it, it just caused this, uh, dissonance within me because it doesn't resonate with love and not that I am a love 100% of the time in my day but I am working on it <laughs> you know I I do um, I do choose love you know every day and so hopefully at some point I will be there all the time <laughs> in that space but uh, I mean because I do have things that come up that irk me or irritate me and so those are the emotions that we are we're experiencing it we come here to experience experiences, you know, outside of love, because there we are love on the other side. We come here to have the experiences and expressions of it. It doesn't mean that we get to be controlling over other people. 
we get to control ourselves and how we experience and express it, right? We're not given control of the other people, which comes into play, you know, with the to- some of the topics I'm talking about. So for one, let's go with uh, the church, right? Or the religion, the groups, things like that. A lot of people, are, a lot of them are bashing, you know, uh, Pride Month and because they believe, which is okay to have your own belief, but when you project it on somebody else and make them out to be evil or bad or wrong and you're right, then that's a problem. Um, and I want to kind of talk about that because this actually, this year, it kind of started before June. Um, we were actually, I was at a, a little town and they were, happened to have a parade. And I don't really usually go to parades because of the abundance of people and the parking. And just for me, it's kind of faded out. I don't really do that. But um, I was going there for a reason. It happened to be a parade there. So I had parked <laughs> way, way in the back, which was a field uh, by some school um, in an area which was in, it was like, I guess they consider it a public parking domain or whatever. And so anybody can do whatever they want. And <laughs> so says the police officer. Um, and so when I came back from what I was doing, my, my task, Um, there was a little flyer on my car which had like um, gay pride in a circle and then crossed off right and so and then all this biblical stuff on how bad and evil and sinful it was (laughs) and I'm like wow I was like wow and to see on every single car along there where families are going to come back from a parade of having a good time having fun experiencing what they came there to experience are coming going to come back into this dogma and this shamefulness um fear-based um document that they're putting out and but i what i learned was as as i was looking at it um of course there's no address or church associated with it but just want to put it out there you know um that what other people are doing are wrong. So in judgment, this person's in judgment, whoever it was, if it was a church or just somebody who practices that belief system, they were putting it on all the cars. So I took it off. I was very irritated. For one, somebody's vandalizing my car. I consider that vandalism. When somebody's touching another person's vehicle without permission or a private piece of property, regardless of where it is parked, that's vandalism to me. So. It's like if you, if somebody was to come up to my car and I pose this as a question to the police officer. So if somebody came up and spray paint on my car, that's not vandalism. What's the difference between spray paint and a piece of paper? It's still, to me, vandalism, regardless of what they're doing. They're touching and invading somebody else. If one of my door was unlocked by accident, they probably would have went in my car, right? You shouldn't be going around putting stuff on people's cars, doing stuff like that. Now, there's no address return on there because I would have reached out to the church or whoever did it. And obviously, they didn't want to be known, but they want to make sure that their belief is known, right? So <laughs> um, so that kind of freaked me out. So yes, I went and talked to the police officer, and the officer was like, nothing we can do because you're parked in a public space where nothing is regulated. I'm like, it's on a school parking lot. That's not regulated. So anyway. Um, they did nothing about it. So anyway, but that was prior to June, right? And so here we are in June uh, with Pi Month, and we're having a lot of conversation um, about it, dogma, control, belief, fear, um, judgment, um, things like that, things that aren't love <laughs> coming up around it. Um, and, you know, and, and I don't want to be in judgment. So the only thing I can say is everybody is where they are in the moment but when you're doing things like that and you're including people in your own judgment fear bias um things like that that's not okay um it's okay to have have your own stuff you just deal with it work on it you know but don't project it and put it on other people right and so kind of was very a little distraught about that you know because you know for me it's kind of like I guess from where I am kind of moving out of a lot of the stuff from waking up I'm kind of thinking or feeling that like we're way beyond beyond that you know in in that space because from being on the other side with the near-death experience now I have that part of me now that that love right um so I can see how 
that relates and how this doesn't relate anymore. What we do here doesn't relate anymore. It doesn't fit into that anymore because what we do here doesn't exist. For me, it's all an illusion that we're playing out because that's the only thing that exists, right? And so it's to bring that here, right? To bring love here and to do that, it's not love, right? It's the, the, the absence of love on the timeline, the stream of consciousness that we're acting from, right? But that's part of the experiencing and some people are still there and so you can't really judge them because they only know what they know right and so that's kind of what jesus says right and in addition to jesus says to be loved so if you're really a christian or a believer in the faith or the bible or the church then you should know to be loved right and to accept all people for who they are right and not to do things like that. So obviously there's some illusion or, or misconstrued and misunderstanding going on there for that person or whoever did that, right? Um, and Jesus said, you know, they know not what they do, so forgive them, right? And so that's all we can do is forgive them because they are in their ignorance, their space of ignorance of where they are. And, and that is basically from conditioning, uh, for like being ingrained into it. And a lot of us will actually ingrain our children into it. We will raise them within these, these systems that will corrupt their mind and their beliefs and separate them from their true selves, which is love, right? And act in that way. You know, they teach them to judge. They teach them to, this is right, this is wrong, this is separation, when none of that really exists, right? And as I'm writing these things, channeling these things, they're going in the books and you can always go back and read them and look at the videos. So I talk about this all the time. You know, a lot of this stuff that we do here doesn't really exist. It's just a part of the play. We make our choices, what we're gonna experience when we come in, we make them and then we play them out. We are born, we have the, the experience integrated and then from there it blossoms, right? And so it becomes the experience and then we shed it and we go back to love and then we come, if we choose, come back and we do it again, right? <laughs> um, based on our experience here, how else can we change it or manipulate or make it better, right? And so there's no punishment, judgment or evil or hell or anything like that. Um, that's not how it is, but they make it out to be like that, right? And because that's part of their belief systems, you know, fear driven, ridden, control, force, right? Their tactics. So they want you to get married, have kids in the system so that you're creating more of this. That's the purpose. So when you bring your kids to church and you get married and do all that, you're facilitating more of it, right? You're indoctrinating your kids. Right? And a lot of people don't think of it like that, but that's what you're doing. But anyway, not to go back down that rabbit hole too much, <laughs> um, it just shows the effectiveness in the religion, the church systems, and how a lot of people are. And there's also research out there with people leaving the churches, you know, in droves just because, you know, of, of all those tactics, you know. And basically, that's just what that is, you know, and just to follow me. And you can't, if you don't, and if you... Uh, if you will, you'll be saved, and if you don't, you won't, right? And that's not true, right? Jesus is not your savior, and Jesus never claimed that. Jesus is not gonna save you. Um, you have to save yourself. <laughs> that's through awakening um, and finding your true self, not following other people who uh, circumvent uh, dogma. Um, and to be love, right? That's how you find the truth, right? And so it's just dropping all that false teachings and perceptions and realities that you think is true when it's not because you can't you can't find trueness in your falseness right it's only going to be a true false you're only going to find truth in your falseness but it's never the truth the real true it's just the false true right and so when we're accepting the dogma and the conditioning based on the um the religions the feedings uh you know what they're feeding you um then that's what you're going to live and believe in. And so if it doesn't match you, then of course it's not going to resonate with you. And so that's where judgment and thinking, you know, that's not right or wrong and taking that stance comes in, right? But it just shows the ineffectiveness of it and how everybody's starting to leave because they're tired of all that. And so they're becoming awakening into the understanding as we're evolving into higher consciousness and dimensions. And for me, I, I even uh, realized this when I was younger, you know, and so my parents tried to ingrain me into it, but I was not having it as a child. Like even at that age, I understood and I knew better, 
to accept it, right? And I would fight them on it. And it's like they would tell me that the sup the Last Supper was another guy. It wasn't Mary sitting next to Jesus when I knew damn well it was Mary, right? And they tried to force these false belief systems on me um, because they didn't want it to be, uh, you know, the way that it was. But I do have uh, some past life memories of actually having Mary there, right, in that um, and she was in relation uh, with Jesus, you know. It wasn't as they predicted, predict it, right, or, or per, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> uh, per, predict it, whatever you want to call it. Um, or they portray it. We'll use that word, portray it. Um, so, yeah, like, and I, I knew that as a kid coming in, and I, you know, Jesus isn't going to save you. You have to save yourself. He's not your savior. And when you put somebody in between you and source, then you create separation. And so you don't have the understanding and you have the disillusion of reality for that. And so that's part of the control and the domination of the churches is to take you away from your divine connection and place this said person in your way. And you have to go through that person to be saved. Right. And that's not how it works. Um, I myself, when I had my near death experience, went home didn't have that, didn't do that, didn't go through Jesus. In fact, I wasn't even going to church. I didn't have any of that, any belief systems, not even an angel or anything, but that all was part of my experience, you know, as a part of it. And so going on the other side, having the near-death experience, I was able to see what really was true versus what isn't, right? But anyway, so it's, you know, it's been for me and I, I didn't accept a lot of the, the teachings. And at some point uh, we were asked, uh, you know, with fighting against it all the time, um, parents finally said, well, do you want to go? And I'm like, no, <laughs> why would I go? Uh, it's not true. Right. And so as a child, I was always um, in the space of love. Right. And so I even got you know, my parents were like, well, you can't just talk to people. You can't go up to people because, and I understood their safety factor on it, but you chalk your children out of being love, you know, putting the perception of, you know, how um, bad people can be, you know, and it's, it's a fine line there. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't teach your kids to be worried or concerned, you know, and play safe, but at the same time, you don't want to talk them out of being love, right? And so there's a fine line there um, because, I was yelled at for talking to strangers, for being kind, for loving people as a child, you know, and so I was not allowed to do that, you know, um, I was punished for it. So anyway, uh, you know, that is, that was then, but now, <laughs> um, but it shows just um, how separate, you know, a lot of people are, you know, having that experience, um, that we're still going through that and we haven't evolved past that. That's something, you know, that we're working through. And it does take time sometimes when there's a lot of people to work through it with that's been ingrained over the period of time and as it perpetuates. So just having the awareness and knowledge that we are waking up going to higher dimensions of reality. And so to bring the love in so that we don't have that anymore, um, you know, the, the lower vibration energies that have been in place uh, for a long time and, um, when I wrote about it, they call it the overseers, right? So the overseers, like the government, the religions, you know, all those who are playing the role, you know, because a lot of them, they depict the food you eat, they depict uh, the clothing that you wear, they depict your belief systems, uh, your jobs, right? Um, and so this is what you have to pick from. They, they put it out there and this is what it is. And though they put it out there, oh, you have freedom to choose, they only give you certain things, right? So you're choosing this, you're choosing that, you're choosing that, right? For instance, every season, um, like you have the certain ones that are the big models for creating um, clothing lines, right? And so everybody wears uh, certain clothing lines, you know, or the certain brand names and this, and it's it just seems to be like, that's the, the main thing that's put out there for people to be a part of. And so we've come from making our own clothes, growing our own food, <laughs> doing this thing, to being a part of this system that we're in on all different levels, right? But anyway, not to get off the topic on the Pride Month, <laughs> but that's what's mean by the overseers, right? They're doing certain things that manipulate the populations. 
right? Which is, um, you know, the conditioning and corruption um, that's com- catapulted a lot of hate and anger and suffering, you know, in, in the land um, uh, towards others, you know, and to keep us limited. Um, and so, you know, we still have these wars, you know, uh, going on and things like that. So it's just happening on a lot of different levels, right? And so basically it's just love, just be loved, just be kind, just be accepting of others, who they are, their choices, because we were never given control of others to have their choices and what they get to choose, what they get to experience or have. We choose that. It's free will. Source gave us who we are, who we're being. And for us to denote that and deny that creates suffering, not just in ourselves, but in the world, because we're not able to bring our true selves out into the world to share what we have to share and to share that we have to be true with ourselves, right? And so whatever that is for us and as an individual being, uh, portraying that we came here to do and to experience, we need to do that, right? And so we need to be true with ourselves. And so to um, deny it, we're denying our true selves, like our abilities, our um, you know, our purpose, you know, things like that. Just because another person doesn't accept us for something, whether it's somebody that we're choosing of same sex or somebody who's opposite of sex, or because we have a male part or a female part. And it has nothing to do with the body. It's not, we are not our bodies. We're not our minds. We're not our emotions. Uh, We're not our um, sexual, you know, preference. Um, We're not any of that. We're we're not our hair. I have hair. It doesn't mean I'm my hair. I have a pinky, you know, doesn't mean I'm not my pinky. Um, Just because I have a body part that is what we term female doesn't mean I'm I'm a female. Doesn't mean that I am or I'm not. I'm just me. Right? Um, in this human form, a soul has taken up form to be in the play and the part of it. But the overseers want to control, and as they ingrain other people, they take up the belief systems and then they act on them. Right? And so <clears throat> instead of just understanding and know who they are and live in the world in union and in, in acceptance of other people, allowing people to have their experience, and you have your experience, you know, if nobody's hurting anybody by having a same-sex partner or dressing or acting a certain way so then what is the problem there isn't any it's just you so it sounds like it's you a personal problem right because we're not here to judge other people we're not here we're here to have our own experience right but too many people are focused on other people and so it's really none of your business basically and there's no other way to put it out there than that you know and so it's about time that we um kind of come to truth and awareness and consciousness, you know, and raising our vibration, you know. The only time I can see anything wrong with it, it's just like having um, religious belief systems, is when we're forcing it on other people, you know, we have, oh, you know, the whole, the COVID situation when, oh, did you get your shot? You have to get your shot, you know, and then everybody's questioning you, oh, it's none of your business. You know, what I do with my body and inject into my body is my own business. If I want to have a baby and I, or I don't, if I want to get an abortion, that's my own business. It's nobody else's business of what we do. It's our own experience. And relative to that, you know, I mean, if we are feeling guilty about doing those things, then of course we're going to have that show up in our world to show us that we're uh, guilty of it or if we're feeling bad about it because it's the reflective factor. But we have our own choices. We make our own choices and our experiences and we play that out. And it's only us, right? I have nothing to do with anybody else. If they want to do what they want to do, then they do it, you know, and nobody has right or control over me, right? And that's just the way it is. That's the way God and Source made us, right? God or Source, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, for me, it's Source. And so it's it's just whatever it relates to you, you know? Um, we don't have, we haven't been control, given to control over other people, but a lot of people think they have it, you know? And so like to sit there and put on somebody's car or to deem somebody bad or right or wrong and yourself right and them wrong or they're going to hell or judge them or that that's not in alignment with love right and so I want to kind of take a look at that and so the other thing I wanted to kind of go over and I want to make sure this is recording because the other one kind of died on me during my last video um, so the, the other thing I wanted to kind of talk about, which I touched on already, is like the body parts, you know, those are just for reproduction. Um, 
you're not, just because you have a certain body part doesn't make it who you are. It's not, it's not who you are. You drop the body parts. It's just for reproduction. It doesn't make you who you are. It makes you relatable, but it's not who you are. You're not identifiable by it. You know, just because I have one doesn't mean I am it, right? So again, I'm not my hair. Just because I have it doesn't mean I'm my hair. Um, my hair can be short, long, brown, black, white, gray, silver, red, whatever color. doesn't mean that's who I am, right? But a lot of people will identify it because they are still in their identity, right? Which is the ego, right? And unfortunately, until you step out of it, you don't know any better. I'm um, going back to what Jesus says. Um, you know, that's just what it is, right? There's no judgment around it. And it's just how you are experienced where you are at the moment, right? And so... Um, we're not our uh, identity. We're not our bodies. We shed it. It's only all temporary, right? And so uh, we don't reign over anybody or our bodies, and we make the choices for them, right? We have the ability, free will, to make our own choices, right? And so we can and should choose freely without anybody saying anything or trying to force, you know, their beliefs onto other people just because they don't resonate with it. And that's fine. But the thing is, it's within you that it doesn't resonate. It's not within another person. Right? And so that shows you that it's you, it's not anybody else. Right? And so if it's not resonating with you, you want to take a look at yourself. <laughs> Why am I feeling this dissonance within myself just because somebody else is being something else um, and it's not even you know, affecting anybody just because you look at them and it bothers you? That's, that's not a reason to hate and judge or you know, do anything to another person, right? It's time that we all kind of wake up from, from this illusion and delusion of what is really being, um, which is love versus the illusion, which isn't, right? And so if anything, it's just sub subjective based on preference um, of who we want to be or, or what do we want to experience. And love doesn't have any boundaries, right? And so to be love, which Jesus tells you to be love, if you're really a Christian, um, and want to follow rightly, um, then it's to be love. And what is to be love is to accept all for who they are, right? It's not to judge. It's not to be biased. It's not to be anything on any level or awareness of whatever is subjective, right? And so um, whether a person wants to uh, wear certain kind of jeans or their hair or tattoos or have a certain partner, you know, it's all relative, right? And so we should be widely accepting all people for all things and not judging, segregating, and separating people based on our likes or dislikes. You know, that's you. And that's okay for you to have, but don't project it onto other people, right? And so basically, another th it's just minding your own business, right? And what affects you affects you. You need to work on that. That's just an indicator that you need to do your own work. Right? And so let others live, live their lives, whatever that is, you know. And with that being said, you know, if nobody's hurting anybody and just living their life and enjoying it, then what's wrong with it? That's, that's love right there, right? And so there's nothing going on for that person. It's only the person who's viewing it and objecting it, you know. And so um, basically it's going to be about fears. And so the thing I want to say about like the fears and insecurities, if it's something that's coming up within you, why is it coming up within you? Does it mean that what you've been taught and believed in all this time isn't real or true or doesn't exist or it interferes with your ego, what you believe in? And so what does that mean? It means you have to get rid of that belief system. And the ego doesn't like to let go of that, right? Because it thought it knew all things. That's the ego. It thinks it knows. And when you disprove it, it becomes angry and hateful and it wants to hurt. Uh, others because it becomes hurt, right? It's a shadow effect. And so with that insecurities, the other thing is like insecurities. Okay, so if it's not true, what does that mean? Does that mean that maybe I need to question myself, right? Am I attracted to another person of the same sex, you know? And so do you really want to go there? <laughs> so it brings up a lot and I understand that. And it's not about being judgment on either side, but my stomach's growing. <laughs> um, but, but with that said, you know, it's, it's really kind of time to, you know, wake up about it. And any fears or insecurities that comes up within you um, in your topics that you're talking about this, um, this month, um, 
you really need to be aimed at yourself and looking at why you're struggling with it, um, not the other person and projection or lashing out or being angry or hurting them because who's the one that's then being the doing of that deed, right? If you want to talk about being evil and suffering and going to hell, who's the one that's really going to be doing that, which actually doesn't exist, but who's going to be the one doing that in your belief system, right? It's going to be you, <laughs> right? Because you're the one that's reacting to it and responding in that way. And so it's coming up in you, meaning it needs to be dealt with, right? And so you need to deal with it, um, not them, right? And so um, we can't change anyone because we were made the way that we're meant to be, which is an image of who we are, the creation, right? We were created in a certain way. You know, there's a lot of things um, that are in, in the world. And if you look at different things and it's outside of the human realm um, or in the human realm, I don't want to discount the human realm, but there's a lot of animals that are just um, reproducing themselves, right? They don't need a mate, right? So just because we're in human form doesn't mean that we are special or separate from anything else that's reproducing itself. It's just for the purpose of reproduction that we have the body parts, right? And the experience to play in it with whoever we choose, right? And as long as it's free will choice, then there's nothing wrong with it, right? And so... <clears throat> it's how source created us and so that's basically based on love right so love has no boundary limits identity uh judgment or sin so there's no suffering in love right and so when you want to be in suffering then you know you're not in love right and so that's a separate from source your true your true self it's showing you the resonant dissonance between that which is and that which isn't love which is experience and so if you can't be love, it's a sign <laughs> that you need to work on yourself, basically. Because um, love isn't just loving what you think you like or don't like or dislike. Um, it's judgment when you get to that point. Love is just being uh, in, allowing love for all things, regardless of its being and what, what it does or who it is or what it's experiencing, what its choices are, right? And so basically that's kind of just what I wanted to say about that, you know, as far as... Um, you know, having this, uh, this month here dedicated uh, to Pride Month, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, if it's something that doesn't, again, if it's something that doesn't resonate with you, then do some self-work. Because um, that's the only way you're going to resolve it, right? And unfortunately, you've been uh, brainwashed into believing that. And so, you know, it is what it is, and we accept, you know, if you are in, in one of those who've been brainwashed into it, you've accepted it, and so you have some responsibility over your own accepting of information, um, which is the disregard of who you truly are, which is love, right? And so what I would really like to do <laughs> um, is actually have a month dedicated to being love or have a holiday of love, and it's not romantic love. It's just remembering who we truly are. And uh, having a whole month with practice of love would be an amazing thing to have to bring us back to wholeness and to help raise the vibration energy of what that really is and help us to reconnect with who we truly are. So happy journeys. <laughs>